My boyfriend Max hates eggplant. At various times, he's referred to this as a slime vegetable, baby food, and Satan zucchini. But I'm pretty confident he'll change his mind if I can get him to try bangin' bartha, which is the most popular Indian eggplant dish. So today I'm gonna show you how to make this delicious and easy recipe, and later I'll try to get Max to have just a bite and see if I can finally get him to like eggplant. Okay, so bangin bertha is an eggplant curry that's infused with Indian spices and aromatics and tomatoes. It's smoky, it's spicy, it's tangy, it's just very, very good. And in Hindi, bertha means mash or filling and bangin means eggplant. So we'll start with one medium eggplant and ideally you want it to be fairly uniform in girth. You don't want it to be too big and you definitely don't want it to be too small. The first thing we're gonna do is peel off the leaves at the top with a paring knife so they don't burn, and then we'll caress this baby with some oil, just a thin layer will do. In the Punjab region of India where this dish originates, the eggplant is actually cooked over an open fire or in a thandar oven. And that's what gives it the characteristic smoky aroma and taste that makes it so good. But I know y'all don't have a thandar oven at home and I certainly don't, so the next best alternative to get that smoky aroma is to cook the eggplant directly on an open flame on your gas stove. And that's what a lot of Indian families will do at home. But if you don't have a gas stove, no worries, because I'll show you a different method later on. To cook your eggplant this way, set your gas burner to medium low heat and grab a pair of metal tongs. Pull the eggplant upright like so, right over the flame. The bottom needs three to six minutes to get charred and a little bit softer. Then carefully flippity flip and do the same for the top of the eggplant for two to three minutes. We peeled off those leaves earlier so that they wouldn't burn here. Get the eggplant comfy on its side with the thick bottom part directly on the flame. Rotate it every two minutes so it cooks evenly. And the goal is to get it super charred and wrinkly on the outside and buttery soft on the inside. If your eggplant is really ripe, that could take eight minutes here. Otherwise, it could take 15 to 16 minutes. By this point, the eggplant should look like it's seen better days. Take a paring knife and if it easily slides in and meets very little to no resistance, it's done. But if the skinnier top half part of the eggplant is not as soft, scooch the eggplant to cook that top part for just a few more minutes. Your stove will be a bit messy, but it's nothing that vinegar and baking soda can't handle. Gently scoop up your eggplant and add it to a large bowl and cover it. We're gonna steam the eggplant like this for five minutes. This will make it easier to peel. Another thing that helps with peeling is if you dip your hands in water as you go. Make sure to remove all of the big crinkly pieces. If there are a few tiny black bits left, that's okay. Slice off the head of the eggplant and now it's time to mash it up. I just run a heavy knife over it back and forth like mincing garlic until it's super smooth. This particular eggplant doesn't seem too watery, but if yours is, add it to a colander for 15 minutes to strain out that water because you definitely don't want a watery bang and bertha. Now, if you don't have a gas stove or you just don't want to cook the eggplant over an open flame, I get it, it's a little messy. No. I recommend chopping up the eggplant and sauteing instead. In my testing, I actually tried four different alternative methods, including roasting the eggplant whole in the oven and roasting it whole on a grill pan. And honestly, they both ended up super flavorless and watery, but sauteing the eggplant actually yielded really flavorful eggplant with a great jammy texture. So let me show you how to do that real quick. For this method, you'll need to peel the eggplant first. I like to slice it into wedges and then cut each wedge into about one half inch pieces. Add a glug of oil to a large frying pan over medium high heat. Without the oil, the eggplant will absolutely stick, so don't skip that part. Once the oil is shimmering, add your eggplant, spread it out, and season with a half teaspoon of kosher salt. You wanna cook for six to seven minutes, but toss only occasionally so it can brown a bit. I'm using a nonstick pan here, but you can also use a cast iron pan, just might need to add a bit more oil to prevent sticking. Once the eggplant starts to break down a bit, lower the heat to medium or medium low, and cook for another 15 to 20 minutes, stirring from time to time. The eggplant doesn't really look like it's getting soft here, but if you press down on it with the spoon, you'll see that it's actually quite soft and jammy on the inside. And once it's done, you'll just mash it up like we did earlier. All right, now it's time to make the bartha, which is the mash or the filling. It is super quick and simple. We're gonna start with the classic Indian aromatics. We've got onion, ginger, garlic, and green chilies, also known as the holy quaternity of Indian cooking. For the onion, I've got a medium red onion. You wanna chop it up pretty finely, and the same thing goes for the garlic. You don't want big pieces of either of these in the dish. Then I'm going to grate one inch of ginger and finally dice a small serrano pepper. 
If you've got baby mouth, do not put this in there. You will die. I mean, you won't die, but you will cry, you will sweat, you will be very unhappy, so just leave it out. If you want some heat, but not super spicy, you could use like half of this pepper, or you could also just take out the membranes and seeds. We like it spicy though, so I'm gonna do the whole pepper. And for the precise measurements for this recipe, be sure to check out the blog post, rainbowplantlife.com. I've got step-by-step -step photos, tips, substitutions, and the printable recipe there. I'll link that in the description box below. Mangan Bartha is usually a bit tangy, which is a nice flavor balance with the spiciness and the tanginess comes from tomatoes. So we'll finally chop two Roma tomatoes. I've got a bit of oil heating up in a frying pan over medium high heat. Start with a teaspoon of cumin seeds. We're gonna let those bloom in the oil for a minute or so. That's gonna bring out their roasty flavor. Then we'll add the onions with a pinch of salt. You want them to start softening, but not brown. So maybe five minutes. In go the ginger, garlic, and serrano pepper we prepped earlier, as well as a half teaspoon of ground turmeric. These need about a minute and a half and stir frequently so they don't burn. Let's add in those tomatoes and you can use the liquid from the tomatoes to scrape up any brown bits that are stuck to the bottom of the pan. Some salt to season everything and a teaspoon of ground coriander. This mixture needs four to five minutes or until the oil starts to release from the tomatoes. This means the aromatics and spices have fully released their flavor and aroma into the hot oil. Now it's time to add in the mashed eggplant from earlier. I also like to add a bit of Kashmiri chili powder. It's mild, so it's not really adding heat, but it does add a nice color because I'll be honest, this is not the most beautiful dish. Lower the heat because eggplant has a tendency to stick and cook for four to five minutes or until the flavors and textures have all combined together. We'll finish this with a teaspoon of garam masala. It's not super traditional, but it adds such a great warming, slightly sweet flavor. It really brings that special something. And of course, some chopped cilantro for a fresh element and a little salt to season. Toss once again to marry all of the flavors together. It's so perfectly smoky from charring the eggplant on the stove. It's spicy, it's got so much rich flavor. I freaking love it, but the important question is, can I get Max to love it? So, do you wanna come on over and taste it? You know I don't. Your time to shine, come on down. Calling Max Chapman to the stand. Max Chapman, your presence is requested. What are you talking about the stand? Come on over. Everyone, this is Max, if you haven't met him before. Hey folks. Are you excited to try this beautiful Bang & Bartha I made for you? Excited is not the, it's not the word I would use. Well, what don't you like about eggplant? It's really just two things. It's the taste and the texture. Those are all of the things. It's not all of the things. I don't mind how it looks. It's a funny uh, emoji to send sometimes. Uh, quite shapely. It's quite, quite shapely. So some things to like. Yes, but just not anything to do with eating it. Oh, cool. Well, regardless of how you feel about eggplant, you have to try this dish because I already told everyone that, that you would. Thank you so much for this. Oh, that's a big bite. Okay, there's a little bit. It's actually pretty good. Nice. Yes, yes. Ooh, second bite, second bite. Wow, um, not bad. Okay, ding, 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 that's a winner. So why do you like this dish, but normally you think eggplant is terrible? I think eggplant normally is very stringy in texture. It's just kind of uncomfortable to eat. This is like a delightful mash. It's very, not like baby food, but it's kind of like easy and enjoyable. Baby to eat. food. I said it's not like baby food. This would be too spicy for a baby. It would be too spicy for Honestly, baby a Honestly, a lot of adults, babies. this would be too spicy. Warmly spiced, very flavorful. Yeah, just all around. This is, uh, this is actually pretty good. All right, folks, you heard it here. Whether you think eggplant is Satan's vegetable, is that what you call it? Satan's zucchini? Satan's zucchini, yeah. Or you love eggplant, you gotta try this Bang & Bartha. It is excellent, it's pretty easy to throw together. Got the full printable recipe on the blog, and if you wanna take it over the top, make some vegan naan to go with it. Find that right here. Thanks for watching, bye! Bye! Bye-bye! Bye! -bye. bye.